Hi everybody, welcome to Markov Chains and Processes. Uh, I'm your lecturer, Steve Drasco, and this is just a short welcome lecture to say hello uh, and to go over the rough outline of the course details. Normally the first lecture of the class would be in sort of two parts, the kind of overview of walking through the module handbook and then a brief introduction to the content. And this little clip here is just going to be the welcome and overview part of that. Um, so let's just take a look here at the module details. So as I said, I'm the lecturer for the module and also the module coordinator, the only staff on the module, really. And this is, you can see my contact details here, my email address and my office. Uh, my office is in the Math Institute. Um, even though I'm in the statistics division where most of our uh, lecturers are in the observatory, my, my office is in the Maths Institute. Math Institute. <laughs> um, the prerequisite for this module is MT2504. If you're a St. Andrews student already, this isn't your uh, first year here, uh, you, you would kind of know what this means and this prerequisite would be meaningful. If you're a master's student or um, have just arrived at St. Andrews, this might not make a lot of sense to you. Um, you can maybe just make a note that it, it means uh, an introductory class on combinatorics and probability. And we're really only going to make use of the probability aspect of that module. Uh, if you have questions about whether or not you, you think you would satisfy the prerequisite uh, and you're not a St. Andrews student who's been around for a couple of years, uh, you can talk to me and we can discuss it. Our lectures are going to be recorded uh, just like this, uh, a little welcome video, and I'm going to post them on our regular schedule, uh, matching with the traditional timetable for this class, which is on Tuesdays and Thursdays um, every week, and then on even weeks, uh, also on Mondays. And I'll post these, they'll be like revealed on Moodle or on Panopto or however you access it. Uh, at 11 a.m. on those days, which is the normally scheduled time for these lectures. Um, we're going to have, oh, and I should, should mention, I think it's pretty important to try to watch the lectures uh, on a regular schedule, or at least as close to that as you can get, because um, if you try to, w being able to watch the lectures uh, recorded is sort of an invitation, it's, it's sort of a blessing and a curse. You can you can watch them now whenever you want. Uh, that's the blessing. And uh, you can rewatch pieces and stuff like that. That's really advantageous. That's one of the nicer things about them. But the curse is that being able to watch them whenever you want sometimes results in you wanting to watch them all at once, sort of near the end, just kind of trying to cram in the information. And that doesn't work out well. So you want to try to avoid the temptation to do that. And try, if you can, to, to watch it on a regular basis and to watch it as if, watch the lectures as if they were uh, in a classroom. So, you know, find a quiet place and, uh, you know, have some, some paper and pen or pencil out or a tablet or whatever it is that you normally would use to take notes. Try to simulate that environment as best as you can. Uh, so that's about the lectures. You won't be able to ask questions in the lectures since they're just recorded. But the tutorials are interactive and live, and so you can ask me questions in there. It's a little bit awkward to try to transplant, transplant your questions uh, into the tutorial space uh, instead of in lectures, but that's kind of the best we can do with these recorded lectures. The tutorials happen once a week. Every week uh, they happen, uh, with the exception of week one, so they start in week two. Um, and they it's an hour-long thing. We have a sheet of problems in advance that you try to work through. And then in the tutorials, in some form or another, we'll go over the solutions or discuss them or talk about how you might get them. Uh, maybe sometimes simulate the real life problem solving experience of kind of stumbling along through the process of trying to make the solutions. That's often pretty useful. Um, the time and the place and the format of your tutorial depend on which tutorial group you're in. Uh, so you should you should choose one, and I'm not sure if you'll be able to choose these just yet, but you should take a look on MMS and see if there's an 
option to select your tutorial group. If it's not there at the very beginning of week one, it should be there at the tail end of week one uh, because we have our first tutorial in week two. Uh, so keep an eye on MMS uh, and keep looking to see if you can sign up for your tutorial group. I'll probably send emails around telling you uh, when that's functioning. Um, the assessment scheme for this module is really simple. It's very old school. It's just 100% examination, and that happens at the end of the semester. So there's not a whole lot to say about that. Okay, uh, I just want to take a moment to talk about the various different reading materials for the module. So there are uh, what we call class notes, um, and they're supplemented by uh, proofs, which are kind of a little bit longer winded. The class notes are, are quite terse. These are um, actually slides from a, another lecturer's version of this course a, a couple of years ago, or a few, maybe four years ago now. I'm not entirely sure, um, but they're a little bit, uh, they're not my slides. They came come from a previous lecturer and they're a little bit terse, but they have all the information on it or in them. Uh, it's just that they're quite terse. Uh, the, the, sorry, they don't have everything in them. They, they're supplemented by these uh, proofs, which are separate uh, separate documents that show you kind of details of how the, some of the proofs work. Um, those are the closest guide to what really happens in the lecture. So those are those are really strong guides for what is important in the module, what might be on the exam, and so on. So those those should be, along with the lectures, your kind of number one resource. But it's always good to use more than one resource, and uh, particularly when one of them is really terse like this. And so I've got a list of four different books here uh, for you to consult. Um, the first one here, Jones and Smith, uh, this is the book that I think uh, maybe was sort of the foundation of the module uh, some time ago, and the module follows it relatively closely. It doesn't use exactly the same notation all the time. Um, and there's one bit near the end of the module that's not in this book. So uh, that's probably uh, a good one to use if, if you can get it. The downside of this book uh, for us uh, is that it's a print book. And so you can get it. You could, you could of course, buy it. Um, you can get it from the library as well. Uh, but we, we've been trying to have electronic books available for you uh, uh, during the sort of pandemic teaching times. And because of that, I've, I've listed uh, some electronic books here as well. Um, I probably should have put these in a different order, but so Jones and Smith is probably the top reference, uh, the most most useful reference, um, although it's only a print book. The the best, um, oh, this is, this is the right order. So the, the best um, alternative to that, if you can't get your hands on the print book, uh, is this book from 2013 called Understanding Markov Chains, Examples and Applications. This is an electronic book, and I believe you can download it as one single PDF file. Uh, and it's not, it's not super structured. It's not structured in exactly the same way as the module. So things might, some pieces might not be in there, or it might have some pieces that aren't in the module. Um, but it's a pretty good book, and it's readily available. And my guess is that over time, this module might gradually convert itself to something that sort of better matches that one uh, over the next few generations of the module. Uh, so that's a pretty good alternative to the Jones and Smith book. Uh, these other two books um, are really kind of not as important. These last two books uh, are really just about what's in chapter seven of our notes or the very last, uh, I don't know, what is it, week or two of the module where we talk about hidden Markov models. And that's a topic that was added to the module relatively recently. It's an interesting and popular topic, um, but it's not, it, it's uh, overrepresented in this list of books here, but it's here because it's not in the first book, Jones and Smith. And I don't think it's in the uh, Prevault book. I'm not sure if we say that, if I said that name right. But nevertheless, um, these are the two books that are probably the most useful for it. And they're way more detailed uh, than what we're going to cover uh, on this topic. But there's this one by Zucchini and McDonald. Uh, I believe that uh, Zucchini actually uh, taught this course here uh, some time ago. Maybe these slides are his. Uh, I never met him. Uh, but uh, that one's pretty good. But again, it's it's way too detailed for, in comparison, it's way more detailed. I, I shouldn't say it's too detailed. It's way more detailed than what we're going to see in this module. Uh, but it's a, it's a good reference for the part. It does include the the component that we will cover. 
So it's probably the best reference for this. However, again, it's a print book. And so I've looked for an alternative, uh, this book by Capé, I hope I've said that name correctly, and a couple of other authors, uh, and that's an electronic book and it's available uh, to you. So that's just the list of reading materials. You should try to use these reading materials to supplement the lectures. You shouldn't expect to do well in the module just by watching the lectures and watching me solve problems in the tutorials. Hopefully we'll be able to get you guys involved in the problem solving in the tutorials to some extent as well. But that's not quite enough. You, you, know, you, you need to work on the tutorial problems on your own. And ideally, you want to do some reading on your own as well to try to supplement the material. Uh, it's always good to have multiple sources for reading or explaining things because oftentimes one explanation is not quite enough and you need some extra, uh, some other versions just to try to make things straight and make things kind of your own, uh, make your own understanding. Okay, um, just a couple of organizational issues. The, the lectures are not going to look quite like this one. They're not really usually going to be using slides, despite the fact that the notes uh, make it look like that would be the case. They're going to be more kind of like a chalkboard style lecture. So I'll use a tablet and we'll write in it as I talk a little bit like the Khan Academy style uh, of presenting material, except that I think I'll also have like, you should be able to see me as well, uh, maybe off to the side or something like that, or as a separate stream. If you want, you should be able to see my face. I think, I think that kind of adds to the, uh, to making the lectures feel kind of more real. Um, but that's how they'll be. They'll be mostly chalkboard style. I think I might once in a while show some plots or something like that on a slide, things that are not as easily reproduced uh, by drawing. But al almost all of it will be kind of traditional classroom style with, uh, with the tablet taking place of the chalkboard. The notes uh, that are on our webpage, on the Moodle webpage, those are updated as we go. So I think I'm showing currently the first, the welcome chapter or introduction chapter and chapter one. And as we move along, I'll reveal more of those. That's partly because I want to make edits uh, as we progress, but it's also because I don't want to overwhelm you with content. So I don't want you to be trying to process it all at once. And I think it works best. It also helps to kind of encourage this, uh, uh, this pacing uh, that you should be doing. Um, oh, and there are also, so as I said, the notes are not just slides like this one, but there are also some supplemental proofs uh, that show some of the more details. Sometimes I won't go over all the proofs in the lecture. Sometimes I will, and sometimes they won't, some of the proofs were actually won't even be in the, some of the proofs that you need to understand um, won't really be in the, the proofs file that's along with the notes, but instead might be in the tutorials uh, or some other, uh, uh, maybe there'll be some of them will be little pieces will be left to you. Okay. Um, we're almost done here with this little welcome lecture. I just want to go over roughly kind of what the module looks like or what, what are the, what is the content that we're going to see? Um, the, the module, I think is a pretty nice module. It's relatively self-contained. Uh, it does require a little bit of background, hence that prerequisite, but the way it goes is kind of like this. So we've, we're today we'll do, or after this lecture, I'll, I'll do, uh, the rest of the introduction. That'll be a separate video. Um, where we'll start to discuss some of the uh, content. After that, we'll spend a little bit of time. So this is so there's seven different chapters that we'll see in the notes. The first chapter uh, will sp in the first chapter we'll spend a little bit of time going over kind of the basics of probability uh, and other uh, kind of fundamental content that we'll need. So the stuff that you would have had in uh, the prerequisite. Um, but kind of reminding you, but in a really fast pace. So, so not, uh, not at the pace of the original prerequisite, say, uh, but that's what's in the preliminaries chapter. Uh, and after that, we'll introduce the, the concept of a Markov chain. So that's chapter two. Um, and the general, the general way that this module goes. So the topic of Markov chains is, uh, relatively popular and has a whole lot of modern applications, but it also has a whole lot of kind of classical applications. Um, that maybe might seem a little bit uh, dated or something. But really all these applications can be kind of, uh, I don't know, transformed from uh, uh, between e uh, into each other. Uh, some of them can. So some like some old school kind of classical application can be recast in some sort of modern, more interesting sounding form. But we're not really gonna try to focus on that. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce the, the content 
these different chapters in in a kind of a relatively traditional layout of some kind of classical applications. And we won't really touch too much on how do you branch off from those into a whole bunch of more, uh, all kinds of different topics. So we're going to sort of mainly just lay out the kind of key uh, classical applications or example type settings uh, in which this material uh, is, is used. And so the, the chapter two will introduce the topic of Markov, chain, Markov chains altogether. And in chapter three, we'll go over a particular, I don't know if application is quite the right word, but a kind of example uh, type of problem that we'll call random walks, uh, which we'll talk a little bit about those in the first uh, in the first lecture as well, but we'll really start to do them carefully in, in chapter three. Then in chapter four, another uh, kind of traditional sort of uh, setting or example of Markov chains is uh, branching processes. So we'll talk about that in chapter four. Uh, after that, we'll talk about Markov processes, which are uh, a slight generalization of Markov chains. Uh, the name for Markov processes kind of varies from time to time, um, but we'll be calling them Markov processes. So that's going to be in chapter five. Chapter six is going to be on queuing systems. Uh, another kind of example uh, setting, classic setting for introducing some of this content. And then chapter seven, which is maybe the most modern aspect of the module, uh, is on hidden Markov models. Um, and we'll go over that uh, as the last part of the module. So that's just the end of the welcome there. I just wanted to say hello, um, and I hope everyone's doing well, and that you'll now go on and uh, maybe check MMS to see if you can register for a tutorial group. And uh, after that, uh, go on and watch the first lecture uh, or the other half, the other part of the first lecture. Okay. Uh, talk to you guys again soon. Bye.